Hi guys and welcome back to our Oxygen Not Included Let's Play series. My name is Luma and today we are going to build whatever the future me is putting on the screen right now. Hello my friends, the main focus of today's video will be built on this electrolyzer setup which is self-powering. We will need this to supply the base with enough oxygen. If you are only interested in that build, go in the top right corner and click the link or go into the descriptions and check the timestamps. So with no further ado, let's start right away. Here we can see a couple duplicants enjoying their life and slacking off. Before we start with our bigger projects, it's time to take care of some minor tasks, like collecting all the eggs down here. And because our hatches are overcrowded, because there are some stone hatchling eggs in there, we can set our egg cracker to stone hatchlings and forever, because the eggs will first end up in our incubators and then secondly in our egg cracker. That's because our priority, which we are setting right now, will be higher on our incubators than it is on our egg cracker. After we collected and transported the fry eggs, it's time to release them again and then set the storage bin back to its original settings. Fry egg, gut fry and tropical fry eggs. Here we can see Abe sleeping on the floor again. Maybe it's time to find out why he does that. He seems to be exhausted. Maybe he doesn't get enough sleep. I found a culprit. It's those little shine nymphs we got in our bedroom. They don't belong here, so either we catch them and throw them somewhere else, or we are going to eat them. And I'm going to close off those doors so future shine nymphs can't get in here. The problem with the stone hatchlings being overcrowded doesn't seem to be the eggs that were laying in the background but there are too many hatchlings inside this stable because somehow our values that we put in got deleted so we have to set them back to maximum of 8 critters every critter that is too much will get wrangled up and put in the next one same settings for here I forgot to activate stone hatches here <laughs> I had to increase the size of the stable by 1 because, as you can see, the size is only 95 tiles and here even less because of those two tiles which I'm going to rip out. So we have a 96 tiles stable and our critters are not overcrowded anymore. Come on, I build the tile and if we check our critters now, they're happy and groomed. At the moment we have some barbecue which is not refrigerated or put in some storage bin in a sterile atmosphere because our storage bin is already filled to the brim. So I'm going to drop every future food source right here because as you can see there's a carbon dioxide tile here so it should be free of germs and it should be sterile. The germ count you can see here is from the floral sand and the floral sand is from the body bud plant. At the end of the last episode I got a little bit too hectic so I released a lot of slime lung into the base which I'm trying to counter now by building one of these hanging pots and placing a body butt in there. The body butt will give off its own germs, but those are positive germs, which is floral scent. Floral scent gives most of the dupes a moral boost, um, except for the ones that got allergy. The positive floral scent germs look like this. It looks like these pink cherry blossoms. More decor plants for us. I just found out that we can't drop food with this automatic dispenser. So I'm going to have to put a uh, fridge right there. As you can see I already built a fridge and also it is almost filled with carbon dioxide so it's in a sterile atmosphere again. Guys we finally got a glossy Draco egg, awesome, we just have to put it in our incubators and then we will have some plastic producing glossy Dracos. Hey everyone, I have a disclaimer for you. Between the last few seconds and now has been a whole day in real life and in this day Clay brought us an amazing update but also changed some of the crucial features of the game. Up until now we stored our food was we built one of these version boxes and put it in a carbon dioxide pit. As you can see here. It was in a sterile atmosphere and unrefrigerated, but the food was still good. Now, as you can see, our food is dropping some percentages and is no longer fresh anymore if it drops under 50%, then it becomes stale. It is dropping rapidly because it has to be deep frozen or in a fridge 
to be considered fresh for a longer time. So to not lose a lot of our food, I think we need to build more of these fridges and power them up. One other change the game made was that we have access to the botanical analyzer, which after we can uh, radiate some plants, they drop some mysterious seeds that can be analyzed and we get new plants that we haven't seen before. Another thing I noticed was they put our conveyor chute back to solid transport and no longer to the solid space transport, where we would have to send a rocket to space to research the normal conveyor chute, which was quite over the top for my opinion. Now that our ration box became useless, I'm building two more refrigerators and fill them up with all the stuff that we dropped in the pit right here. Because the electrolyzer setup that I want to build right now will use up a lot of time from our dupes, I'm going to drop the priority of, of everything that we don't need right now, like these mealwoods, because we already have enough calories to one. Also, I'm going to cancel all the harvesting from plants that we don't want to eat right now. Disable harvesting. Because our dupes will have a hard time working in this carbon dioxide atmosphere as you can see down here and they will have to run up here to breathe every time they're building something, I'm going to carbon scrub this with our carbon skimmer. Therefore we will need to hook it up to our water system. I'm using this water that we cleaned here and I'm going to reroute it down to the carbon skimmer. The polluted water that will come out of this carbon skimmer will be refiltered in our filtration room and then put back into our purification room. Because I'm not really planning on building a giant pipeline to our filtration room, I'm just going to drop it in our infinite storage. The water should be clean of germs because it went to our purification room beforehand. So I'm just going to run this upwards and connect it to our infinite storage. By flicking this switch I will now allow the water from our purification room to go to our carbon skimmer. So let's see how this goes. As you can see the carbon skimmer started to work and he is using the clean water, skims the carbon out of the air and converts it to polluted water. The polluted water then gets stored in our infinite storage. We got another care package and because I'm not ready to take in another dupe and because a lot of our food will spoil in the future because of the new update, I'm going to take the fried mushrooms. Also, since we only got 9 tons of algae left and the electrolyzer is not built yet, I'm going to dig up all those algae. To increase the building environment for the duplicants down here, I placed another carbon skimmer and one of those oxygen diffusers. As you can see I changed up the design a little bit. I want to vacuum out the room first before I start building. That's gonna be easier for some of these parts. And I'm not gonna use the polluted water but I'm going to use our brine that we have from the printing pot so I don't have to deal with the off-gassing of the polluted water. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this Let's Play series, it would be super awesome of you if you could leave a like. It helps my channel to find new audience and also my motivation to make more videos. There we go, more seats for us. While the room is still being vacuumed out, I'm building one of the sliding poles all the way through our base. We have a sliding pole and a vacuum now, so we can start building. First we can place in the automation cables and get rid of the gas pumps and of our gas pipes. After that has been taken care of the power cables can be deconstructed and we can research the low resistance conductors so we get the conductive wires. While the duplicants are still researching, we are using the time to building up the gas pumps. We will need 5 gas pumps and every gas pump will be made out of gold amalgam. As you can see, gold amalgam has an overheat temperature of the standard 75 plus another 50. So we are at 125 degrees overheat temperature before the building breaks. 
That will give us more leeway in case that the gases that come out are a little bit too hot. Another blueprint, another seed. The next of our gas pumps will go there. It will suck up the hydrogen in the future, which will be burned in our hydrogen generators, which I'm going to place down here. This is our gas pipe that will lead to them. These will be the gas pipes that will lead to our base and deliver fresh oxygen. A lot of skill points to allocate for all of our duplicants. And since our duplicants are very slow building anything, I'm going to give every single one improved construction. So every dupe that does not have improved construction one will get improved construction. Joshua, Mary already has it, Mima, Trovaldo and even Turner. Now we can connect the power. Back to the automation. Now I can place the AND gate as well as a Atmos sensor and a signal switch. The signal switch will allow us to turn this on and off and the Atmos sensor will do the same thing but automatically. So only when this is turned on and the Atmos sensor sends a signal, this will work. Now we can remove all the clutter from the left part and then close it off with a wall. Our glossy Draco finally hatched. Now we can make room in our ranch and set the critter drop off to glossy Draco. The carbon dioxide situation down here was really annoying, as you can see. So I put up another system. This is the water sieve and a carbon skimmer in combination. So every time the carbon skimmer receives fresh water, it skims some of this carbon dioxide from the air, sends the polluted water to our sieve and the sieve filters it, filters it back to clean water. Here's some backup water in the pipe. We got a new care package and we can use the brine to substitute the polluted water and we are going to put a thin layer of the brine on top of our electrolyzer in our SPOM setup. The next important part of our electrolyzer SPOM setup are the electrolyzers as well as more tiles so we can place more of them right here. The duplicants are finally done building the electrolyzers in our room. Now we just have to fill them up with brine but only less than 2 kilograms. For that, I built a little contraption down here. In the short video, you have seen me using the bottle emptier and pressing stop at the exact right moment to drop only a tiny amount of water instead of the full 200 kilograms. But to automate this process, or not automate it, but to make it easier, I built this contraption. It works as follows. We have a liquid pump here, which will suck up our brine, which is heavier than water. Then it will go to this valve, which is set to 100 gram packages. So every of these packages will be 100 gram. We have a liquid shutoff that we can manually turn on and off. And we have an outlet. This is just to show it. So if I press play, you will see the 100 gram packages of brine going through the pipe. How are we going to use that? Well, I'm going to run this and press stop at any moment between 1 and 2 kilograms so it cuts off the stream and we will have the right amount of liquid in our electrolyzer room. We have been blessed with more barbecue. Now we have the setup to fill up all our electrolyzers with a tiny amount of brine. This is how I routed our pipes. This is a 1-2-3 splitter so every package goes either there, here or on the top and I've put another outlet here so that we don't get packages of bigger than 100 grams a second of brine because if you don't have an outlet there will be 10 kilograms in the first package which will ruin your distribution. Now let's activate it and see how it goes. After flicking the switch we can see the 100 gram packages of the brine evenly scattering themselves across the three outlets. After a couple seconds we can flick the switch again and turn the system off and now we can check how much liquid there is. The next step in building the electrolyzer setup is placing the water on top of the brine after we build this tile so it doesn't flow over the edge. Therefore I placed another pool with a little bit of clean water here and a pump with the same setup that we had before. The tiles have been built so we can start the setup. For the water we are doing the same thing as for the brine but notice the water is way lighter. Therefore we can see the water on top of the brine. Until the oxygen system is built, we are not taking in another duplicant, so more oxalide it is. As you can see, we finished the inside of the electrolyzer room. Now to the automation. 
This signal will switch on all of our pumps when this signal sends a green and our Atmos sensor also sends a green signal. I'm going to set this to 2 kilograms. These two Atmos sensors will be set to 1 kilogram and this filter gate is only here so that the Atmos sensors, if they send a green signal, don't transfer it down to our hydrogen generators and the smart battery, which I will be hooking up to this cable. In this time lapse, you can see me placing the generators that will be producing the energy for our spawn setup. Everything should be made out of gold amalgam. Another care package, another bottle of brine. Hey guys, as you can see, I finished the electrolyzer setup. I've added two more switches so I can shut off the electrolyzers here and here. One electrolyzer is enough for 8 duplicants, to be exact for 8.8 .8 duplicants. So this should be enough for 24 duplicants and we can switch on and off how much we need. I've already hooked up a water line, but it is only filled until here. So we can prime the system and look if everything is alright. The layout for the gas pipes can be seen here. This pump will suck up the hydrogen and pump it to our hydrogen generators. It's spaghettis around here to cool the hydrogen generators because they will heat up over time and the gas will cool it down and get burnt. The power layout looks as follows. I've connected all of our electrolyzers and gas pumps to the hydrogen generators and a smart battery. We just need to prime the system with two manual generators. The automation wire is connected to all the hydrogen generators as well as the smart battery and everything I told you before. The smart battery is set to 90 and 70. So every time the smart battery reaches a capacity of 90, it will stop. And if it reaches a low capacity of 70%, it will start the generators and produce energy. And it not only starts the generators, but it will start the gas pump. The moment of truth has come. Now we see whether I screwed up or everything works fine. So I will connect our power cables. The system will start up as soon as some duplicants run on these hamster wheels. So let's see how this goes. I switch to the gas overlay. Now we can see Ape running on the wheel and the gases separating themselves. The liquid pipe overlay shows the water being used. And the gas overlay shows us how the hydrogen is filling up the first generator. If the first generator will be filled up eventually, the next one will be filled up and the next one. The smart battery is filling up, so our system is finished. Everything worked just fine, so we can deconstruct the unnecessary cables and the hamster wheels now. Now all that is left to do is connect up all our gas pipes. As you can see here, I placed some pipes on every second floor and an outlet. The second most important thing is we have to connect up some water pipes. For now I will be using this rest water that will be filtrated in our purification room and after that I'll be using the 60 degree water from our steam gazer. Or if that's not quick enough I will be using the water in our second water tank. It will be shipped over downwards and up to our spawn. What we need to keep in mind is that this oxygen will be very hot. At the moment it's only 33 degrees, but in the future it's going up to 70 degrees if the water input is very hot. So we will need to cool this rather sooner than later. For now I'm going to activate it and we can see where the oxygen will vent. The oxygen diffusers can be deactivated now, but I'm not deconstructing them. You never know. Until we get more clean water from the right side of our base, I will activate our purification reserve water and send it down to our electrolyzer spawn setup. And again, more blueprints, more seeds. To gain access to the steam gazer, I plant a double liquid lock and I'm planning on digging down here and placing a water pump right there. The power for our liquid pump will come from this cable because there's still some juice on it left. Guys, this is what I was afraid of. As you can see, the room is way over its normal temperature and the meal would stopped growing. So our poor glossy Draco 
is starving right now. And I only have 1.1 cycles to save him. Since he's eating meatwood while it is growing, we have to transport him somewhere when there is still meatwood left. I will drop our Draco in our meatwood farm and close off the doors and hope that we, he will survive. For that, I will need a critter drop off right here. The glossy Draco is being wrangled up right now and then hopefully transported downwards to our prepared mealwood room. The glossy Draco ate and we managed to save him. As you can see in the down right, its calorie count went up. And we have another contestant for a duplicate being trapped. Look at Mary, she's all red in the face right now. Now that we finally have some plastic, we can get rid of the manual switch and change it out for a germ sensor. I'm going to set the germ sensor to below one and our liquid reservoir back to five zero. I place the liquid lock one tile lower, remove this tile, let the water flow in so I don't have to do that manually. Now I'm going to raise the middle tile one up and place some of sandstone tiles here to get a vacuum. The vacuum has been finished and Mary saved again. For the water pump and the hot water from the steam gazer, I hooked it up with an insulation pipe, run it down and the water goes first to our electrolyzers and the leftover water will run into our infinite water storage. Now could be a good time to research the steam turbine because we are going to need it to cool the base down. What? Oh, come on. It seems that now that we are in the DLC, you will need the radiation research to build the steam turbine, which is not very good for us right now. So we are going to research the steam turbine First, no, we're going to research the radiation, research first and then the steam turbine. Again, more seeds it is. To not further cook our base, I built a cooling system here, which is just for the short term, but this will be filled with ice and I'm putting in some water. Our oxygen will run through it with radiant tiles and I hope this will help with the cooling down. At the moment we are at 46 degrees Celsius, which is way too high. The ice that I mentioned will come from up here. As you can see, the temperatures are super cold. Here's some polluted ice, here's some clean ice, and here's more ice. At the moment I don't know where to store polluted ice because it will turn to polluted water. And that's why I'm going to dig around it. As you can see, I switched to a digging style only, so I can get to the ice faster. Now that we have the ice, we can go back to our storage bin and set it to liquefiable. And as soon as it is filled, we're going to drop the ice in here. At the moment we got 3 tons of minus 60 degree ice in here, so we're going to drop it and hope that it will melt in the warm water, fill up and cool our oxygen a little bit, which is getting hotter by the minute. To speed up the process, I'm going to build a temp shift plate out of the ice, if I find it. That worked as intended, super. So let's see if that actually cooled down our oxygen. It did not. In the time lapse that you're seeing right now, I'm trying to fix the issue with the thermal conductivity of the radiant pipes. I'm going to remove the radiant pipes that we have right now that are made out of gold amalgam ore and replace them with uh, some made of aluminium. I've also added another temp shift plate made out of copper ore. Even though the temp shift plate hasn't been fully built yet, we can see a massive increase in cooling power. The oxygen output is 2 degrees Celsius. To stop the dupes from wasting more meal lives, I deactivated the harvesting right here. Because as you can see, we have over 200,000 of pickled meal in calories. I didn't pay enough attention, but we ran out of algae, so we can't feed our pakwe anymore. So it's time to dig up more of those algae reserves that I left here. Hey guys, if you liked what you've seen so far, please give it a like. And now I will sum up what we achieved today. The self-powering oxygen module, the electrolyzer setup with the hydrogen generators has finally been built, as well as an improvised cooling solution for now. 
We tapped into a pocket with hot steam gazer water, which we are using to power our electrolyzer setup. The plastic from the glossy Draco was put to good use for a germ sensor in our purification room. We managed to get a glossy Draco, get some plastic, as well as ruin our plants with the heat from the oxygen. We also had to rescue the glossy Draco by putting it down in our mealwood farm before it died of starvation. In the search for some ice we excavated and expanded upwards and I'm thinking of continuing our power shaft here on the left. We also have to get rid of this polluted water pocket. We got surprised by the new update and it ruined a lot of our food reserves. We had to replace our old storage with fridges. But as you can see on the top left we have over 200,000 calories left. It says here that we have only pickled meal, omelette and mukroot. In order to find out why that is the case we can take a look what the duplicants ate the last few days. As you can see the duplicants ate a lot of barbecue, paco filet, cooked fish and omelettes. That is the case because they just like to eat the good stuff first. That is why we only have the grizzly preserved meal lice left that nobody wants to eat. Another thing that you could notice is that the update killed a lot of our food because it rotted away. For everyone who is still here, thank you a lot, consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow and I wish you all an awesome day. Love you guys and Luma out.